This is video 4.3. In it, we will solve a problem with a block sliding down an inclined plane with friction. The question. We have a block pushed down an incline as shown below. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.6, the mass of the block is 5 kilograms, and the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. How far will the block slide before stopping? Step one is to draw the force body diagram. Now there are three forces acting on the block. There's the gravitational force acting straight down, the normal force acting perpendicular to the incline, and the frictional force which opposes the block's motion down the incline. Step two is to compute the magnitude of the forces. The gravitational force is given by the following equation. We plug in the mass and we get 49 newtons. That one's easy. Now the normal force is given by the product of the gravitational force and the cosine of the angle. This is a formula you can find in your physics textbook. When we plug in the information, we get 46 newtons. The frictional force is given by the product of the coefficient of friction, denoted here by the Greek letter mu, and the normal force. From the previous slide, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.6, and the normal force we just figured is 46. Plugging those into a calculator, we get a frictional force of 27.6 newtons. Now step three is to decompose the forces. I plan to decompose the forces into forces that are parallel to the ramp and perpendicular to the ramp. We'll start off the, with the ones parallel to the ramp. I'm drawing in a few dotted lines to make it easier to decompose the gravitational force. I've also labeled that interior angle there, which is 70 degrees because it's the complement of the 20 degree angle that the incline makes with the horizontal. From the diagram, you can see that the component of the gravitational force that's parallel to the ramp is adjacent to the angle 70 degrees. So we have to multiply it by the cosine of theta to get the component parallel to the ramp. We plug in the numbers, we get 16.8 newtons. Now the frictional force is already parallel to the ramp, except we need to add a negative sign to take into account the fact that the frictional force is opposing the block's motion down the ramp. And because we've decided the positive direction is down the ramp, the negative direction is up the ramp, we have to add a negative sign, which gives us negative 27.6 newtons. This allows us to calculate the net force parallel to the ramp. We add them, and we get negative 10.8 newtons. It's important that it's a negative here, because otherwise the block would keep sliding down the ramp and accelerating, and it would never come to a stop. This would happen if, for example, the coefficient of friction were not as high, or the incline were steeper, or both. But because the net force is negative, the block will eventually come to a stop. Now we'll look at the forces perpendicular to the ramp. The normal force is by definition perpendicular to the ramp. So we have the component perpendicular is just equal to the normal force itself, which we figured out a couple slides ago to be 46 newtons. Now I'll draw in the dotted lines again in the angle so that we can break down the gravitational force. First note that it's downward, which is why I've added a negative sign. And then by studying the diagram, we can see that the component that's down is, or the component that's perpendicular to the ramp is opposite the angle 70 degrees. Therefore, we have to use sine theta. We plug in our numbers, and we get negative 46 newtons. 
Now this is not a coincidence that this is equal and opposite to the normal force because the normal force is precisely the component of the gravitational force that is perpendicular to the ramp. Because they're equal and opposite, they cancel out so that the net force perpendicular to the ramp is zero. We can understand this intuitively by noting that the block does not move up or down from the ramp. The two components are in perfect equ equilibrium so that the only motion is down the ramp. Now we'll find the acceleration. We have the net force is equal to the force that's parallel to the ramp, which we've calculated to be negative 10.8 newtons. We have the mass, and we have, after rearranging Newton's second law, the formula for the acceleration. We take our numbers, plug them in, and we get an acceleration of negative 2.16 meters per second squared. Now we can find the displacement. We use this equation because we know the initial velocity, the final velocity, and the acceleration. We rearrange the equation plug in our numbers and insert into a calculator. After taking account the significant figures in the problem, we get a displacement of 48 meters. And that concludes video 4.3. Check out PhysicsX on the app stores. This revolutionary physics app for smartphones and tablets contains over 100 videos and 500 multiple choice questions designed by education experts. It's been proven to improve scores for intro college physics, AP physics, MCAT physics, and more. Just look for the blue icon.